Good afternoon. If Dale were sitting in the audience, we know that he would, for me, be pointing at his watch and saying it's time to start. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the family. I appreciate their, your willingness to abide by the mask request. And if you please would make sure that your cell phones are all turned off and any other electronics that may beep or make other noises. Thank you. My name is Judy Hampton. I'm a lay leader here at the church, but I'm also a longtime family friend. And it's an honor for me to be able to do this for you today. Please stand as you are able and join us in the first hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, life may be in you. And that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our God. Amen. Amen. We all 
Old Testament is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint.
afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. If you'd uh, like to join me um, in the New Testament lesson, I'm going to be reading out of Romans chapter 8. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, and those who love God, who are all called according to his purpose. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. reading from the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. All this I have spoken while still will with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Dale Berman. 
Ellickson, age 100 and three quarters, died May 12, 2021, at Riverbend Hospital of Old Age. Dale was born in Eugene, Oregon, August 12, 1920, to Elida Hildegard Stedish and Gustav Ellickson. He attended Lincoln grade school and was skipped from fifth, fifth to sixth grade. While attending Woodrow Wilson Junior High School to guard, which continued through his first year of college. He learned to play tennis at Eugene High School, where he was president of the Latin and Archery Club and was elected to Honor Society. Dale began to work at the cannery his freshman summer, graduating from high school at age 16. He entered the University of Oregon playing freshman tennis and dating, and dating Mary Catherine Taylor. He continued work at the cannery summers and autumns until it interfered with law school. Fall 1942, Dale was drafted out of law school into the Medical Administrative Corps. He became engaged to marry Catherine Taylor before leaving for the Army, and they married March 28, 1943. Following Army discharge, he re-entered law school, graduating in 1947. Dale and Mary Kay bought hillside property in Oak Ridge and had the shell of a house built. They moved into a partially completed basement and Dale continued construction weekends and evenings. With a family of five, he was back in the Army, 1950-1952. He had a patio, fireplace, great barber, bird bath, sundial, and water, sundial and waterfall through the years. Dale was the first resident attorney of Oak Ridge in private practice 38 years, Oak Ridge 30, city attorney 30 years, school board attorney 25 years, and Lowell city attorney 17 years. He was a member of the Oregon State Bar, Lane County Bar, League of Oregon Cities, Lane Chamber of Commerce, local chamber of commerce, serving as president and beautification chairman, winning construction of the community building and tennis courts at Greenwaters Park, was docent and president of the Oak Ridge Museum, a Lobach tutor, a 1969 first citizen of the year, and April 2012 Lane County senior volunteer. He was certified lay speaker in the United Methodist Church and held many local, county, and state lay leadership positions. He was an active volunteer in construction of the Park City Educational Unit, Sanctuary, and Bill Tower over a 30 photography, traveling, camping with family, writing historic twinning, and the U of O alumni band. After retirement, he and Mary Kay attended many elder hospitals and traveled to 15 other countries. They always enjoyed entertaining visitors, sharing produce from their garden, and playing trombone piano duets. Dale is survived by children Mary Alice Ellickson of Portland, Susan Kay and Ron Swanson of Junction City, Martha Ellickson, daughter-in-law of Portland, Beth Ann and Norm Lewis of Oak Ridge, Helen Jean Whiffen and Ken Ronicky of Albany, grandchildren Josh, Jocela, Jocelyn and Melinda Thomas, Jeffrey and Joshua Swanson, and Neil and Blake Ritz, great grandchildren of Bailey and Ted Swanson, Tate Swanson, excuse me, Axel Swanson, Nolan Tallis, and Brooke Ritz and his sister, Lois Ken Skinner. He was predeceased by his wife, Mary Catherine, his son, his sister, Irma King, and his brother, Wayne. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy. Don't defend each man as my brother. Each man as my friend.
We now have some special remembrances from a few family and friends. The first one will be John Melendon. The second one, Denise Cater. The third one, Ken Wright. And the fourth one, Janice Nail. Certainly not as fast as his. 
His comment was a slight nod and a little thought. I think it's important to mention two events when Dale expressed outwardly joy. The first was his remarriage to Mary Kay as a beautiful ceremony. Having his brother present <coughs> as his best man and his acquisition of a new garden killer when he noted that he received many comments to the effect that why would someone old as you really want a new garden killer? <laughs> he was so proud of that killer. And he chuckled every time he mentioned it. There are many events we all share with Dale and Eric Hay and how their family loved and supported them, especially during the later tough years. To my knowledge, neither complaint. Their faith and prayer sustained them throughout. Hi, my name is Denise Cater, and I'm a relative newcomer to the community, just about 15 years now. Uh, Dale Hellickson was a lovely gentleman with a brilliant sense of humor. John Lennon stole part of my speech. <laughs> he was a good listener and could hold his own on just about any subject. We often sorted out the woes of the world, and I value his conversation and opinions. It's difficult to talk about Dale without mentioning Mary Kay, because they were truly a team. They both gave selflessly of their time and resources to our lovely community here in Oak Ridge, this church, and many charitable organizations throughout the world. In the meantime, they raised a pretty remarkable family. Both Dale and Mary Kay were instrumental in myself and many others in becoming part of the Methodist Church family. In our adult Sunday school class one time, after having learned that Dale was a lawyer here in Oak Ridge for many years, I sarcastically said, so a Christian lawyer, how do you swing that? <laughs> and he, without a pause, he said, smiled and said very carefully. <laughs> the Ellicksons have always been avid gardeners and most people here have been the recipients of their efforts. They were generous with everything they had and I know several folks in town who have gotten a start off that amazing fig tree. There comes a fig tree. <laughs> and any other plants or anything they had that you might have admired, you, you, you admire it and you can be going home with it. They all love to eat and I love to cook. So that was a good relationship. We compared notes on both subjects and also on gardening. Towards the end of Dale's life, he felt like he, he had served his purpose here on earth. But he was wrong about that. 100 years is a pretty good run. And I'm proud to have known him and called him a friend and a mentor. Today we're celebrating his life and his well-earned place in heaven with those who went before him. May he rest in eternal peace. Thank you.
you use either from either a microphone, but you notice there's one at my height, and there's one at John's height. I feel, feel honored. My name is Ken Wright. I feel honored to uh, be asked to say a few things about Dale, because Dale was one of those people who uh, helped me grow up. I came here in Oak Ridge in 1977. I'm almost 72 years old now, so you can imagine that I was a young man with young kids and young ideals from a big city. And he helped me transition to become, to know Oak Ridge as a community of support, as a family, his family, without exceptions, reached out to help us as we needed to as we grew. So many things happened as we progressed through the years. My success is reflected in a lot of the things that Dale did for us as a family. He touched people who lived here and many more who have passed and moved on. He continually was exceptional in his ability to always be by your side. As a Cub Scout leader, I um, can honestly say that he was, not only was he part of the church in that sense, but he really loved young kids and the things going on. And he made an, made an effort to say something special to each and every boy or girl that was young doing things. He made a point of showing us all the power of saying thank you, the power of being appreciated. He made me feel appreciated. When I was a young man, and came here to Oak Ridge. I was a new teacher and wrestling coach. I was already a Methodist, but Dale and Mary Kay showed me how to be an involved Methodist, how to reach out and do more than just sit, in the, sit on the pews every Sunday. He encouraged me to become a Sunday school's leader, teacher, Cub Scout leader, worked with the Scouts. All these things are things that Dale saw possibilities in me that I had not seen in myself. And it's for that reason that I feel honored to be here. They were role models. Elaine and I have always acted a little outside the box. If you know us, you know that we don't, don't always, we're a little outspoken sometimes, but more important, we're excitable. And he brought me back to earth. And he showed me the importance of uh, consistency and being a, um, being a person who, like I say, if I could do the things that he did for as many years as he did, I know that someday, half a lifetime away from me, maybe if I make it that far, he will. I will be glad to be able to sit in a place and say thank you to the kids that are around and growing up. At 98, 96, 97, and 90, and 85, he was right here during those times that the Cub Scouts had activities and he would say, well done. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be appreciated. And Dale always made you feel appreciated. As a lawyer and community participant, he showed me what skills we have to be better friends and better neighbors. Dale lived a long life by almost every measure, and he never wavered in acting out his values. My values and our values are what make our world and community into supportive people. 
as I leave here today, take Dale's actions and memories with you. I know I will. Thank you. I just figured out why they asked me to speak. It's the Moffat connection. <laughs> Would the Moffats stand up that are here today? All of you, the Moffats. Then I'll tell you why. Uh -oh. There they are, standing up. Eunice Tabor, right, was Mary Catherine's mother. Her, and she, her maiden name was Moffat. My dad, Montgomery Moffat, was the youngest one in the seven children, Moffat children. And uh, he was kind of mischievous, kind of like. And when Dale walked into a room, everybody knew he was a gentleman. And if you, you liked him right off the bat. And I kind of thought when I was really little, because I'm only 83 now, so when I was like five, I think, I knew right away that that Dale Hellickson would be the guy that I would probably like to have for a boyfriend someday. <laughs> and, and then Mary Kay was my really good friend, and we had lots and lots of good things that we talked about. And um, one of them was that my dad and Mary Catherine were about the same age. <laughs> and um, it was a wonderful thing, the Moffat family reunions, Dale was at every Moffat family reunion. He was at every graduation for the Moffat family. He was at every memorial for the Moffat family. Dale was there. And I truly, like, like the ones who spoke before me so eloquently, you guys did a beautiful job. Um, he was everything they said. And um, who doesn't want a pet in their life after Dale Ellickson? Don't we all want to do that? It's, but it's hard <laughs> to be nice like that and to do all that good stuff. But um, yeah, you know, um, he did it. And I, I am so glad he was my friend. And he was my husband's friend too. My husband is a little bit unconventional, the best relationship. And my husband was really, really ill. And Dale, with Beth's help, called frequently to make sure he was okay. And when he was talking to him on the, Dale on the phone, you think, you know, you kind of thought, uh, is that Dale <laughs> that he's talking to? But they really enjoyed each other. And I can tell that it's full, of, this place is full Dale Hellickson, and I don't think it's ever, ever going to go away. And with that, I know you're hungry, so let's get on with it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry, but I was also asked if I wanted to speak, and I said no. But I do want to do one thing that requires audience participation. Nobody said go ducks. <laughs> Go Ducks! So, one, two, three. Go Ducks! Thank you, that was for Dale. <laughs> Sorry if I offended anybody, but I, I needed to do that. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need, and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, all who have sinned and mercy. To all who sorrow, give peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory, now and forever. 
Amen. Receive Dale into the arms of your mercy. In the blessed rest, Amen. Please stand if you are able and join in with the final hymn, Be Still My Soul. conversation and remembrances. We're having Dale's favorite thing, dessert. <laughs> so please feel free and come and partake. Now may the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, according to the riches of God's glory, grant you to be strengthened with us, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen.